Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! Bob the Railway Dog The True Story of an Adventurous Dog Written by Corrine Finton Illustrated by Andrew McLean For sugar and cinnamon Waiting where they wandered under the wattle and gums. C.F. For all our wonderful dogs, you can measure your life in dogs. A.M. Special thanks to Ron Fluck, O.A.M., for his expert advice and wisdom. And to Marianne Ballantyne for believing we could do it. Bob the Railway Dog the True Story of an Adventurous Dog Written by Corrine Finton Illustrated by Andrew McLean In those hushed moments before sunset, a train crept, hissing and sighing into Carrington Station, South Australia. It was September 1884. Running the train that night were a driver, a fireman, and a guard, Will Ferry. Among the cargo was a motley lot of homeless dogs that had come up from Adelaide. They were on their way to be rabbit hunters in outback South Australia. When guard Ferry spied one of the pups smiling at him, it was as if they'd met before. Well, what do we have here? Fairy said as he ruffled the pup's fur. The pup looked up at Guard Fairy, and something tumbled in the man's heart. When the rest of the dogs went on their way, there was one that stayed behind. Guard Fairy named him Bob. Every day, Bob trotted to the station with his master, and every evening he was there, waiting when the train returned. One morning, as the train was inching away from the station, Guard Fairy looked back at Bob. Come on then, fella, he said, and faster than a lightning flash, Bob jumped up into the caboose. From that day on, Bob traveled regularly with Guard Ferry on the wheat special train all the way up to Corn. In those early days of the railway, shiny new tracks, like spider webs, were opening up vast areas of Australia. Trains were the link from mining town to farming town. Trains arrived with supplies and left with the town's produce. Wheat, cattle, sheep, and of course passengers traveled by train. Bob would jump into the cab of one train, leap off at some wayward spot, then clamber onto a train heading in the opposite direction. There was hardly a town in South Australia he did not visit, from Udnadatta to Kalongadu. His favorite spot was on a Yankee engine or on the coal tender with the whistle echoing and wild smoke billowing around him. He stood there when the night train ran, only the glow of one lonely beam unstitching the black opal night while Spinifex bushes peeped from beside the tracks like woolly-headed ghosts. When the Adelaide to Melbourne Intercolonial Railway opened in 1887, Bob could travel even farther. There was hustle and bustle and a flurry of farewells at the busy stations, and Bob was part of it all. He was welcome in any porter's room at any station. Everyone knew Bob the Railway Dog. 
At the end of each day, he would follow a driver or guard home for the night. Wherever there were train tracks or tracks being laid, Bob was there. If a train was heading to an important event, Bob was sure to be on it. It is said Bob was a distinguished guest at the Melbourne Centennial International Exhibition and at the opening of the Hawkesbury River Railway Bridge in New South Wales. Some say he was even spotted up north in Queensland. Every so often, Bob called in to visit his old friend, Guard Ferry, but Bob was a wanderer. The moment a train chugged and chuffed and the whistle blew, Bob jumped aboard. Bob had adventure in his heart and the rattle of the rails in his soul. He was everyone's friend, Bob, the railway dog. Author's Note Bob was a regular visitor to Adelaide Station, where his photo still sits behind a framed glass window. And at the National Railway Museum in Port Adelaide, you can see Bob's special collar, a gift from the railway man he loved, engraved with the words, Stop me not, but let me jog, for I am Bob, the driver's dog.